All right. Hi, lovely. So if you're here, you are hearing our story for John Quincy Adams. So I'm going to read from We Were There Too, Young People in U.S. History by Philip Hoos, which is an informational book with a lot of information about lots of different people. So John Quincy Adams, translating for the revolution. John Quincy Adams, or Johnny to his family, was born to be a patriot. Both his parents, John and Abigail Adams, were leaders of the American Revolution. Johnny had an amazing talent for learning languages. He was so good that as a boy, he traveled the world with his father, seeking money and support for the American cause. By the time he reached his early teens, he was one of America's most experienced statesmen. One afternoon, when Johnny Adams was eight, a sound like thunder rocketed his family's farm. His mother grabbed his hand and pulled him to the top of Penn's Hill, his highest points on the property. Looking north toward Boston Harbor, he could see a British warship launching cannonballs at the village of Charleston. Pillars of smoke rose towards the clouds and houses were in flames. He looked up at his mother and knew the war had started. I witnessed the tears of my mother and mingled them with my own, he wrote later. Soon, 4,000 English soldiers marched into Boston and city, and city people fled into the countryside. Before long, it seemed that everyone knew the, Ad everyone the Adamses knew, and some they didn't, were living at their farm. Johnny's father rode off for Philadelphia to represent Massachusetts in the Continental Congress to decide how the colonies would organize an army and unite as a nation. He told Johnny to fix your attention on great and glorious objects while he was gone. Johnny tried, but the most glorious objects around the farm seemed to be potatoes, peas, and chickens. After the, his ninth birthday, Johnny became a post writer, carrying mail on horseback along the rutted road between his farm and Boston. The detailed letters from his father to his mother al alone would have been valuable to the British, but Johnny managed to make the 11-mile trip home safely each time. Johnny yearned to make his heroic parents proud of him. He studied for hours each day and volunteered for just about every task. He worried that he was too lazy, while his parents worried that he was too serious. At the age of nine, Johnny wrote this letter to his father in Philadelphia. Dear Sir, I love to receive letters very well, much better than I love to write them. I make but a poor figure at composition. My head is much too fickle. My thoughts are running after birds' eggs, play, and trifles till I get vetted with myself. Mama has a troublesome task to keep me a studying. I wish, sir, you would give me in writing some instructions with regard to the use of my time and advise me how to portion my studies and play, and I will keep them by me and endeavor to follow them. With the, pres with the present determination of growing better, I am, dear sir, your son, John Quincy Adams. After the colonies declared independence from England in 1776, the Continental Congress dispatched John Adams to France to persuade King Louis to join the American cause. Eleven-year-old Johnny begged to go along with his father. On February 13, 1778, shortly after, father and son boarded the Boston and set sail. A British warship spotted the vessel and fired a signal to stop. Instead, the crew let out more sail and raced for the open ocean. A two-day chase ended when a, gale, when a gale overwhelmed both ships. Mammoth waves crashed over the deck and hurled passengers against the cabin walls. A bolt of lightning split the mast, killing four soldiers sorry, sailors. When at last the sky brightened, the crew found themselves looking at yet another British ship with cannons pointed right at them. Tired of running, they opened fire, captured the ship, and continued up onto France. 
Johnny loved Paris and had a wonderful ear for French. The king readily agreed to send a French ambassador back to America, but he selected a man who could barely sputter a word of greeting in English. Johnny became his tutor, standing at the ship's rail and patiently giving him the, the ambassador vocabulary drills and explaining how verbs worked until the man could co communicate in English. The more Johnny helped, the more people asked him to do. At age 14, he went to Russia to help Americans, America's new ambassador, Robert Dana. French was the language spoken in the Russian court, and Johnny was fluent. He didn't really want to go, but he couldn't bring himself to say no when so many American boys were fighting. He found Russia to be a dark, cold, and impoverished land. There is nobody here but slaves and princes, he wrote his mother. He worked all day long and found few friends his own age. After two years, he and the Italian teenager departed for France. Four months they journeyed and sled over the frozen rivers and snowfields of Sweden, Denmark, and Germany until they reached Paris. On April 20th, 1783, Johnny finally got to hug his joyous father. Soon after, he watched as John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, and John Jay signed a peace treaty with Britain, ending the Revolutionary War. Back home, his proud father described Johnny Adams as a son who is the greatest traveler of his age and as promising and manly a youth as in the whole world. So that was the story of John Quincy Adams translating for the revolution. So after that, um, it talks about what happened to John Quincy Adams. So I'll tell you a little bit about what happened to him um, after that. He returned to Boston at 18 to study law at Harvard. That year, he wrote, in America, I can live independent and free, and rather than live otherwise, I would wish to die. And he's kept studying languages. He married Louisa Catherine Johnson and became the father of three children. By the time John Quincy Adams was inaugurated as the sixth president of the United States in 1825, it was said that he was so learned that he could write English with one hand and translate Greek with the other. All right, that's our story of John Quincy Adams. Hope you look at some more information on our slide deck. Yeah.